I want to start by looking at your reference table um, and showing you what you're going to need to use for this. So this is the very first page of your reference packet. And if we look right here, we have thermodynamic constants. All right, we have heat of fusion for water, heat of vaporization for water, and specific heat for water. So these are the constants that you're going to use in your formulas. So heat of fusion is going to deal with um, melting or freezing, okay, going from liquid to a gas, or I'm sorry, liquid to solid or solid to liquid. All right, and when we're talking about vaporization, we are talking about boiling or condensing. So going from a liquid to a gas or gas to a liquid. Now specific heat of water, this is going to be, you're going to use this when you have a change in temperature. So you're increasing temperature or you're decreasing temperature. And notice that there are different values for ice, your solid, for steam is 2.02, .02, and then for liquid, which is the most common, is 4.18. Now you've seen these same things on the uh, the packet that I gave you, but you might see this as delta H FUS or delta H VAP. This just means H is a fancy word for energy. Okay, we say enthalpy. Um, so fusion, of course, heat of fusion of water, vaporization, heat of vaporization. Now on your formula page, the formulas that you're going to need to use are right here. Okay, so again, um, Q says here is your quantity of heat energy, CP is your specific heat, heat of vaporization is HF, and heat of fusion is, I'm sorry, HV, HF is heat of fusion. So these are the same formulas that are on your packet that you got. All right, this is a heating curve. So we're zero to negative, this should be negative 220 here. Um, so we have ice. We have solid H2O. Then at zero, which you know is the melting point or the freezing point of water, notice that we're putting heat in, but the temperature's not changing. So what's happening at the flat part is we're actually going through the phase change. All right, that's where your melting or your freezing is happening. So you're going into breaking the bonds or forming the bonds. Then once we're at our liquid stage, where our temperature is going to increase. Um, so we're adding heat, it's going to increase the temperature until we get to the boiling point. So again, at the flat part, you have a phase change. This particular one is boiling um, and condensing if we have a cooling curve. Same thing, just a mirror image. So the formulas, if you have a change in temperature, like on a slope part, you're going to use Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature. If you're, use, if you're finding heat during um, boiling or condensing, you're going to use your heat of vaporization times your mass. And if you're finding the heat during melting or freezing, you're going to use mass times heat of fusion. So these are the different parts of the graph that you would use. The Y graph or the phase diagram graph is here. Now your boiling point is going to be the boi boiling point at standard pressure, sorry, you're going to find the temperature there, okay, and the melting point is the melting, uh, is where we melt. So pressure here, standard pressure is 1 atm. So this part of the curve is between solid and liquid, so at 1, our melting point or a freezing point is 0, and at 1 atm along this curve, which is between our liquid and our gas, is at 100 for water, so that's our normal boiling point. The triple point is where you actually have all three phases in equilibrium. So at a pretty low pressure and a fairly low temperature, there's a triple point for water. The critical temperature is the highest temperature um, where you can have a distinct liquid. Anything above this critical point, you're not going to be able to distinguish between a liquid or a gas. Okay. So these are, you need to know triple point, you need to know critical point, you need to know how to find normal boiling point and normal freezing point. So that's where you're at standard pressure.